Greetings Haskellings and welcome to the Advent of Code 2020. It's great that you can join me as we fumble together through solving these wonderful challenges using my favourite language, Haskell. Today, however, we're not going to be doing any solutions. Rather, we'll be setting up an efficient coding environment for solving the challenges. This is the setup that I like to use and is specific to my platform. So if you're already using a different platform or, or comfortable with setting up your own Haskell environment, then feel free to just skip this video. But I'll present here how I like to set up uh, a simple environment specifically for Advent of Code. To start with, I'll create a directory for Advent of Code. I've already created a GitHub repository for putting my solutions online, which I'm going to clone into that directory. I created this repo using GitHub's Haskell defaults, which simply provides us with a .gitignore file specific for Haskell. Okay, so I'll clone that into a new directory. Then I'm going to create a shell script snippet to host the session cookie that I'll need to automate a few things that will make our lives a little, a little bit easier. So I'm going to create this .cookie file that simply sets an environment variable called AOC underscore cookie. Then I'll grab the cookie from the advent of code website and copy that into the shell script snippet. Okay, so let's test that out uh, by sourcing that .cookie file and we can attempt to fetch an input file from the advent of code website using curl. This is input file is of course not yet available, so let's just see if we can download a file from last year. So that has worked, which means that our session cookie is working as expected. So let's create a little shell script to fetch the input files. And we can make it fetch all the input files up until today that we haven't yet fetched. I'm going to do this with a bash script. So if you're not familiar with shell scripting, then don't worry too much about the details here. This can of course also be done using Haskell and it's easy to find examples online of this. So we use the hash bang line to indicate that this script should be interpreted by bash. Then we should make sure we're running in the correct directory, which should be the directory that this script resides in. And we can do this by using doname on $0, which is the full path of the script itself. This change of directory will not affect the caller's current directory because the script will be run in its own subshell. So now we can source in the cookie file to bring in the AOC underscore cookie environment variable, which contains our session cookie. Yeah, let's just reload to get syntax highlighting working. Okay. So now we're going to get the current date, but we need to be sure to use EST, which is the time zone that the advent of code is running. Let's test that by making our script executable and then running it. So yeah, we can get the date. So we now need to extract the year, month, and day using the percent formatting option to the date command. So using capital Y, M, and D, we can get the current year, month, and day. All right, let's test that out. Then we can put those values into local variables this year, this month, and this day. Okay, so now we're going to test the current date against the advent days. We can set the year that we're interested in to 2020. Then we can iterate through the days from one to 25. And we're going to first check if we're in the right year and month, and that today is after the date we're interested in. We can put our output file name into a local variable, then check to see if we've already fetched this file. If we have, then we don't do anything and continue to the next iteration. When we make these sort of automations, it's really important that we actually don't fetch a file more than once, so we don't put undue stress on the website. Okay, so then we can use curl to fetch the input file for that day using our session cookie. So let's test this out, and it shouldn't yet fetch anything since it's not yet December. So the next step is to set up our build system. I like to keep things simple for Advent of Code and just use make and GHC rather than using Cabal or Stack. 
Of course, you're free to use whichever tools you like, but these are the tools that I'm already familiar with and work well for me. So I'm going to set up some standard flags for GCC and GHC. Using position independent code is probably not so relevant for us here, but I'll add it just by habit. I'll also enable level two optimization and debugging symbols. I'll also set some flags specific for GHC to enable threading, command line runtime options, less verbose output from the compiler, and also I disable the implicit prelude. I do this so I can replace a few of the standard prelude functions with slightly more useful variations. So the first rule in our mag file will be to build executables from our source Haskell files. We use the double colon here to uh, ensure we only build executables for the Haskell files that exist and don't look to create those Haskell files automatically, which wouldn't make sense. We build an executable by running GHC on our input file and then remove the intermediate files that we're not so interested in. To test our make file, we can create a test source file and we're going to use the naming convention of the day of the month followed by an A or a B for the first and second challenges of the day, respectively. Our test day one source file will just use the interact function from the prelude, which we'll cover in a bit more detail in the next episode. We'll simply run interact on the show function to spit out the representation of the string that was given as input. Let's make sure that we can compile and run our code. Okay, great. So in our make file, we need to be able to build and run all the solutions that we've done so far. We can do this by matching against source files with the wildcard function of make. We have to have two rules because we need to match both solutions for day one to nine, as well as solutions from day 10 to 25. We can then create a rule to build and run all the solutions that exist and then print out the outputs in order. We need a phony rule to tell make that the all rule is just a rule and doesn't actually correspond to a file named all. Next, we make a rule that makes the output file by running our solution over the input file for that day. We need to duplicate this rule to cater to the A and B challenges for each day. If you can think of a better way to do this, then please let me know in the comments. Okay, so let's have a look at that and Oh yeah, we need to put in an input file. And then, yeah, so it's working, but let's uh, format that a little bit more nicely. So let's add in a carriage return. Right, yeah, that looks much better. So now we just need to add a few more rules. So um, we can add a clean rule, which is very usual in make files to clean up artifacts and a dist clean rule. And they're fairly standard. We're just going to remove the artifacts that have um, that we haven't written, the ones that we've actually that were built by the system. And of course once we have these rules for clean and dist clean, we're going to have to also add those to the phony rule because once again, clean and disk clean are not actual files that make needs to look for. The last thing we can actually do is tell make that certain files are considered precious, which means that make will never delete them. So what we can do is actually make our, our build executables uh, precious and then make will preserve those so we don't have to rebuild them. Okay, so I think we're going to leave it there for this video. Happy Haskelling. See you on day one.